Hey everybody, it's Master Gallon Guys here, bringing you my impressions of E3 2016 from last week. So, overall I was pretty impressed with some of the stuff that we got to see from E3 last week, and excited to see how many of these games and cool things we we're going to see this year and next in the coming years. So, I'm usually more of an Xbox kind of person, so I'm going to start off with kind of their press conference and all that, so... Overall, I really liked their press conference. Microsoft did a pretty good job, and I kind of see where they're kind of going with what they're doing, because they started off with the announcement of the Xbox One S. So this is essentially the slim model, which has now integrated the power brick, which is great, and is also 40% smaller and comes within various kind of upgrade models up to 2 terabyte hard drive. Thank God someone's got that built in. But that one is not the price of $299, that is $399. So that's an important kind of thing because it was kind of misleading in that, oh, it's starting at $299. I'm like, oh, that'd be good if that's like the 2 terabyte one or whatnot. But that one's more expensive. It does not come with Connect, but it comes with a redesigned controller output for like 4K and all that with like video and all that. And it overall looks like a better Xbox One. Now, people are kind of confused like, Who's this marketed towards? Pretty much people who have yet to upgrade from the 360 and those looking for to switch over from maybe PlayStation or whatnot, from like PlayStation 3 or upgrading, it's kind of to get people into Xbox at a better way than what has been what previously launched with. It's kind of like a attempt to rejigger what Xbox One is at the moment for things coming on later down the line. And in that regard, I think it's a pretty smart move, even though what they revealed at the end of their press conference kind of confuses people even more. Because this also does not have Connect support. You need an adapter for the USB to use Connect. So it looks like that they're changing up what they're thinking of using Connect for. Now, granted, as a voice control system, it's a kind of spotty, but it's kind of there's potential there if they develop it. But we'll have to see if Connect is in their minds going forward. So a lot of good games that I was kind of excited for were shown. We got to see Gears 4. And I was really... you. I played the multiplayer beta, and it was pretty much exactly like Gears that I wanted. So I'm like, they can't really screw up the campaign too much. Because as long as they have a pretty good story, good atmosphere and everything... It's going to be the Gears that I love. And this kind of like drove that point home. I'm like, all right, this is definitely something that I'm excited for. We also got to see some stuff with like uh, Halo Wars 2, which we also had the beta that was launched that day. I had some issues trying to get into that because downloading it took forever. And the multiplayer portion of it was kind of weird because it was kind of capture the flag and that it was domination, like dominating points. And... Overall, I enjoyed it, and I'm happy to see what they're going to be doing with the retail, like, the campaigns and all that, and see what the full release is going to be. We also got to see Dead Rising 4 is coming out in this December, and oh, excited for that game. I love the Dead Rising series, I love the wackiness of it, and we're getting Frank West back. And I don't mind that, but I would rather have a new character, because every iteration has had a new character. I mean, I like Frank West. But I kind of want a new person story, kind of new investment, because I like Frank West, what he was doing. I like Chuck Green, what he was doing. And I like Nick and what he was doing. So that's my only kind of gripe, but making combo weapons and having zombie fun and power armor being introduced, it looks fun as all get out. It's really kind of good. And they showed a lot more kind of other games and everything that was kind of going on in there. And... It looked interesting. I mean, some of the games I'm kind of waiting on the fence for to kind of see what's going on. ReCore looks pretty interesting, kind of seeing that kind of platforming kind of element and all the different kind of things that you can do. But the real big thing at the end was the announcement of Project Scorpio, which is their new console. And kind of showing that this is kind of where they're moving forward, doing like six teraflops and all that and all the kind of things that's going into it. This is kind of what the Xbox One... And the PlayStation 4 kind of should have been in this launch cycle. Now, I'm not saying that Sony did wrong with the PlayStation 4, but if you look at this 
console generation with like the Wii U, the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, this has kind of been what I'm going to term as like a holding pattern in that it was kind of the in-between generation where we had good kind of stuff that we were putting at 1080 and now we're trying to figure the 4K because it advanced to such a point that now we're demanding 4K because that's what's going on, that's what VR is demanding and everything and what we're going to be doing with that. So that's why this needed to come out now. What I liked that they were talking about with the Xbox ecosystem that they're doing is that all Xbox One games will be playable on the Scorpio, and if anything's available on the Scorpio, you can play it on the Xbox One too. That's pretty cool. Now granted, you won't be able to do probably as many features or whatnot, or 4K resolution, but it's good to know that nobody's being left behind. I mean, we'll have three separate kind of Xbox consoles, but I think we're moving toward a more kind of less where you have to have a certain console to play a certain game. And they're talking about like having that going forward, taking games that you're playing now on one thing and continuing them on forward through successive generations. So that's kind of pretty cool. They also announced the Xbox Anywhere where if you buy digitally an Xbox One game, you would also automatically get a PC version and vice versa, which is actually pretty cool to kind of get people doing that and talking about more cross-platform play between, like, Xbox One and PC, which is cool that they're trying to build an ecosystem with that. And the launching of kind of new features of, like, looking for group and clubs, trying to make X, giving more Xbox social features that people have been demanding, and also tying in that social thing. They need to have... They had to have realized that their biggest blunder with the Xbox One was to not make it a games console first and then have the added value. Because we're going to be the people that market that kind of stuff. We're the fans of like an Xbox or a PlayStation. We're like, we're the gamers. We talk other people into like, oh, this also plays Blu-rays. This also does this, that, and the other. Get one and then you'll see it and then you can also play games with me on it. That's how you get people in. So overall, I think Microsoft had a pretty good conference with that and saying that that was going to be coming in 2017 to Project Scorpio. I thought it wouldn't be earlier, but of course this thing's going to be a beast, hopefully. And hopefully Sony's is on par with it because we haven't been given any specifics on Sony's, but it's going to be running 4K and everything, and I don't want one to trounce the other. I want a kind of nice back and forth with the companies because I don't want a monopoly. I don't want one to go under. I know there's the fanboys and everything that's like, this is my favorite, that's my favorite, I want this to crush the other. I don't want that. I want different experiences. I want people to be able to have games that they like to play on whatever they like to play. So I want to see Sony come back with what they've got. I want to see the full force of what Microsoft is getting. And I'm just glad that Microsoft has finally gritted up and said, we need to do this gaming stuff right. And that's how we'll get synergy with all that we're doing. That's why I was excited for that. And I'm really excited and looking forward to Project Scorpio and what it'll be able to do and what the games will be on. it. And then we get to Sony's press conference. And, I mean, I didn't watch it, but I saw all the different kinds of games and everything that they were talking about, and I thought they did a pretty good job. Now, we got to see the newest God of War, which looks pretty amazing. I mean, I the only reason I haven't played on PlayStation in a while is because the two things that would have got me to buy a PlayStation were Kingdom Hearts and Jack and Daxter. And they made Kingdom Hearts go on to multi-platform, so they got a Jack and Daxter in there. It's cool. But this God of War looks pretty interesting, going kind of like the Norse mythology and all that, I think, and kind of introducing like Kratos being a father, so I think that's going to be cool. And we also got the big announcement that they're remastering Crash Bandicoots for Sony, which everybody's been clamoring for a new one. I hope that this whets their appetite and they actually make a Crash Bandicoot game, because why don't you want money? People will buy it. Do it good, do it right. I mean, Sony, you're so far ahead. You've got so much money. I mean, just from all the console sales, do these games right, you'll be great. And it was also really cool to see uh, Hayao Kojima's new thing that they're doing, Death Stranding with Norman Reedus. I mean, I don't know what the fuck's going on in it, 
but I'm intrigued. I uh, hope it does awesome because Hideo Kojima is, he's awesome. All that stuff that was going on between him and Konami, he doesn't deserve that. So, they're doing all that, they're showing all these cool games, and they revealed the price of the PlayStation VR at $399. Now, that might be a problem, but it's still cheaper than any other kind of VR that's out there. My only thing was you need, like, the moves to do certain things, and depending, I've got to see how they're going to implement it. Because we also saw stuff that Batman is going to be using it, Star Wars Battlefront with missions, Res the new Resident Evil, which is going to be awesome. At first I was sad, I'm like, oh no, it's going to be just PlayStation VR exclusive. And I'm like, it's also coming on Xbox. I'm like, yes, I need my Resident Evil, I need my good Resident Evil, but I'm glad that Sony's getting that for people to do VR stuff for, because that's going to be awesome. And my only worry is how it's going to do. Because VR prices are kind of weird and cagey because this is new tech. And people had negative reactions with the Kinect with Xbox. That's my only fear because I want this to do well. But from what I've been hearing and everything, all this stuff with like the Resident Evil, the Batman, the Star Wars, it is VR done right. So... That's what you need. You need killer apps and killer demonstration of what the technology is going to do and what it can be and how it can immerse you into the game. Then people will buy. Then you can build it cheaper, lower the price. Everybody else then gets into it, and it'll be good. So that's what I'm hoping for Sony because they learned from the PlayStation 3. Okay, because they have dominated this cycle. So we'll have to see kind of how how their strategy is because... They're smart. They know what they're doing now. They've figured out kind of the trends, and it'll be interesting to see what they're doing. I only thought their weakness was to not talk about the Neo. I mean, they kind of did a little bit before, but a little bit more information and maybe a possible release date window, similar to the Project Scorpio, would have been a little bit better. But overall, it had just as strong as a press conference as Microsoft did. So... Then we kind of had all the other kind of stuff going on. I mean, EA showing their stuff, Activision showing their stuff. Uh, we got this uh, awesome news that Bethesda is remastering Skyrim for the current gen consoles and that you can do mods on, like, the Xbox. So that's going to be off. I mean, I don't know if I'll get it because I've already beaten Skyrim once and it was pretty good. I mean, I don't know if I'd go back. I'd rather want a new Elder Scrolls game. But this is probably being dropped for mods to do whatever to hold off till the next Elder Scrolls that they confirm they're working on. So the only other thing that was really kind of interesting was seeing more stuff on like Ubisoft's like Watch Dogs and like the new Ghost Recon, which looked pretty good and interesting. But the game that stole me over, South Park, The Fractured Butthole. That's going to probably be my game of the year this year. I mean, it's amazing because it's coming out the same day as Dead Rising 4, but it is a game, if it's anything like Stick of Truth and even better, which is what it's looking like, it's going to be my game of the year this year. I mean, Immerse Me in South Park, I mean, look, just look at the trailer. It's another episode that you're playing. It's awesomely made. It's made with love. It's made with care. It knows what it is, what its fans want, what the game, what a gamer fan of South Park would want, because the stick of truth, yes, it had its technical issues, but you were in South Park, and this one's like, we are in South Park, we're now playing superheroes, it's going to be awesome, that's going to be my, ah, moment, that's going to be my good one, because I'm like, yeah, that one right there, I'm going to try and make whatever superhero I want in the confines of what they've got. It's going to get it on, man. We're going to see where this is going, because you went through so much weird stuff in the stick of truth. And you know that the creators of South Park are just going to make it even better. It's I'm interested to see if they continue doing this. I mean, yes, it's an intensive process, but if they're going to be like doing kind of different kind of stuff that do a season, do a game, do a season, do a game or whatnot, like build it into their schedule, because... If they could continue the quality of the Stick of Truth, we could have a really good South Park franchise going on that's a really good RPG. 
So those are my opinions on E3 and kind of the stuff that stood out with me. Uh, tell me what you guys liked from E3, what excited you, what you're looking forward to in the next coming years. Um, stuff that you liked, stuff that you hated, what you think about where it's all going, if you, what you're trying to think of, what's gaming going to be going forward. Like, how you think VR is going to do, how you think the companies are going to handle VR, what they're going to go forward. And tell me what your thoughts are in the comments and everything. So, uh, yeah, do that, subscribe and like, and hope you guys have a good day.